Lesson 4.9, page number 329, Graphing Straight Lines. <coughs> what we're going to do in this lesson is continue along with the graphing that we've done um, up to this point. We uh, had a graph and we learned how to plot points. We learned how to name the points that were on the graph. Now we're going to learn how to draw pictures of equations on the graph. So let me go ahead and draw our graph here again. See if we have enough room on this little board to do what we need to do. Okay. One of the things that we're going to do um, as we draw a picture of these equations is uh, we're going to come up with some uh, the table that we had done earlier. Remember we had our table that looked like this. I also not only gave you a table, but I also wrote like this. Um, something like that to show you this was the X and this is the Y went, went with it. This was the X, this is the Y that went along with it. If we were to draw it in table form, it would look like this. The X is 2, the Y needs to be 3. So uh, we're going to continue along with that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with the ordered pairs, the ones we had up here at the parentheses, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three ordered pairs, and leave that one blank, and the second ordered pair is going to be a zero with the next part blank, and the next one is going to be negative one with that part blank, and I'm going to give you an equation. Okay, so my equation, y equals 2x plus 1, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture of this equation. And again, it's a linear equation, which means our picture is going to be a straight line. But that straight line could be here, here, I mean it could be anywhere on this graph, and that's what we have to determine is where on this graph is that straight line going to be. So given this bit of information, I'm looking at example 2 on page 330, given this information, Let's see if we can figure it out. So if y equals 2x plus 1, if x is 1, what is y going to be? y equals 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3. Okay, let's erase that. Okay, if x is 0. So y equals 1. Okay, let's keep going here. If y is negative 1, or I'm sorry, x is negative 1. So y equals negative 1. Okay? So there are the three solutions, which there are uh, an infinite number. There's no end to the number of solutions. You just plug a number in here, whatever it spits out as our y is one of the solutions. So it could be anything, but these are just three, because actually you need, in order to draw a straight line, you only need two points. You need, you know, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. The problem is, sometimes when you draw that distance between your two points, one of these points could be wrong. Let's say that, the, that you drew this line here, and it was here, between these two points, but actually the answer was here but because you put the wrong point up here. Well, you wouldn't know that if you just put two points there because you just draw a line between the two and you think you're right. But if you have to come up with three points, what's going to happen is, let's say you put a point here, a point here, and you got another point here. Well, if you connect all three of these points, you're not going to get a straight line. So you know there's a mistake in here somewhere. So that third point prevents you from making or let, rec, helps you to recognize whether you made a mistake or not because that third point has to be in line with the other two points. If that's the case, then you did it correctly. If they don't all three line up, one of your points is messed up and you need to relook at it. So it's kind of a, a prevention from making a mistake when you're graphing these. So let's go ahead and graph each one of these points now that we plugged them into the equation and found out what the other one equals so let's go one three let me use a different color here makes it a little easier to recognize things one three 
zero one and negative one negative one okay so I get a line that goes through all three of those points there is a picture of y equals 2x plus 1. So we just drew that picture. Alright, let's take it a step further. This time, let's see if I can keep my graph here without having to erase it every time. Let's do it a little bit different this time. This time I'm not going to give you those ordered pair at the top. You know how I had these up here at the top? I'm not going to give you any of that. You're going to have to, we're going to have to figure it out without any of that information. And let's use the equation. Okay, so I want a picture of that. I want a graph of it. I know it's going to be a straight line. So what I do is I can choose whatever number in the whole world I want x to be, and then I'll get a y. Because remember, if it forms a straight line, there's an infinite number of possibilities that my x and y can be. So let's just pick some numbers um, for x. Let's just do three of them. Why don't we put a zero in there, because I know three times zero is zero, it kind of makes it easier. And let's put a one in there, and then let's throw in a negative one. It's always good to kind of throw in a variety, some positive numbers, some negative numbers. All right, so if x is zero, y equals negative two, so negative two. Okay, if x is one, y equals 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, if x is negative 1, y equals negative 3 minus 2, y equals negative 5. Okay, so there's my ordered pairs. That's all you have to do. You pick any three numbers you want for x, it does not matter, and find out what y is. Or if you put your y's in here first, find out what x is. But it works better when the y is isolated already to find numbers for x to find out what number x has to be to make this a true statement. So that being ca the case, let's go ahead and graph these. 0, negative 2. So we don't go left to right any. 0, enough to right nothing. So we stay here, but we go down 2. 1, 1. And negative 1, negative 5. Notice We've got a line there, so it worked just fine and dandy for us. So that is a picture of that equation. It would not matter what numbers you used here, um, as long as your y represented the, the um, dependent number, dependent on what the x was. Put that on there, and uh, it doesn't matter. A fellow student may have 6, 9, and 14 for their x, and they're going to get a different y then, but all of their answers are going to lie on the same line. It does not matter. So it, you can pick whatever number you would like to, and it will make that come out to a straight line the same way that we just did. All right, if I have something like 3x plus 2y equals 6, all right, one of the problems we run into there here is uh, both of these variables on the same side. So let's go ahead and put some numbers in here. Let's put x, y, let's put 0 in for x. So if we do that, those, that's 0. So 2y equals 6. Let's divide by 2. y equals 3. This seems kind of monotonous, and it is. There really isn't any easy way at this point on doing this. Okay, let's do 1. Put a 1 there. Divide by 2. y equals 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. Okay, and then we do the same thing with our other, with another number and then we graph it. So just real quick, for graphing one and a half, so we come over one and up one and a half. One and a half would be between one and two here. So that's how you would pick that point. Okay, well let's do some problems and we'll let you go.